Grand Challenges, the Development of Problem-Solving Skills. First, an introduction. This is Ed Meyer. I got my degree in 1989 from Case Western Reserve. I was a research scientist at Imperial Chemical Industries for 11 years. Then I left and became a professor of physics at Baldwin Wallace, where I still teach. Here I am at a recent problem-solving workshop. To talk about grand challenges, I'm going to start with academic environments. Google doesn't even ask for test scores and GPA because they do not correlate with success at the company. Academic environments are artificial. They're trained to solve specific problems. We need people who can figure stuff out where there's no obvious answer. Of course, that's what employers want. The real world has ill-defined, new, challenging problems that take weeks or months to finish and we don't even know if there's an answer. Academia has well-defined old problems that can be answered in a single class period and they have a definite answer. That's how you get graded. The first time someone works on an ill-defined, new, challenging problem should not be in a job interview. It should be in academia. You should get a lot of practice because that's what you're going to be doing in the real world. All the scientists that I see I did all day was tackle challenging problems. In fact, it wasn't just the scientists. It was everybody. Purchasing, human resources. You want to deal with problems? Work in human resources. They're all new. They're all challenging. If they weren't new and challenging, it wouldn't be a problem. So when I interviewed job candidates as a recruiter, I wanted to know what kind of experience they had in struggling with new challenging problems. So I started the interview with, what's the hardest problem you've ever solved? Tell me about that. What's the best idea you ever had? When were you sitting there struggling and all of a sudden an idea came into your head that wasn't put there by anyone else? Tell me about that. Well, the candidate said, well, I can't think of one. Next, I wanted to get a good idea of how, they, how good they were at tackling hard problems. And to do this, I gave them a new challenging multi-step problem. And many of them said things like, I never saw a problem like this before. Well, that's why I'm giving it to you. I didn't have this in school. Yeah, like every problem we have at ICI, if you had it in school, it wouldn't be a problem. We wouldn't have to hire you to solve it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, whenever you don't know what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to think really hard and try to figure it out. Not sit there and wait for somebody to tell you what to do. So they haven't developed the ability to sit and struggle for a long time with a real problem. And this is what I wanted. I wanted people who viewed a new challenging problem as an exciting opportunity to learn. And working on a grand challenge with a good coach will develop these skills, struggling with really hard problems. And of course, it'll provide the skills necessary to tackle problems in one's personal life, financial problems, relationship problems, career problems, grit, tenacity, mental stamina, cleverness, and of course, you're a lot of fun to work with. It's fun to work with clever people. It's fun to work with people who have good ideas. It's fun to work with tenacious people. So virtually everyone on the planet has already successfully tackled a few grand challenges. Learning how to walk, what a struggle that is. Months and months of falling down. Learning how to talk, you make this noise and you have to make words. It takes a long time. It's a great struggle. So having a grand challenge to struggle with, it's a great way to prevent boredom. Anytime you're bored, wasting time, go work on your grand challenge. Try to reach a new level of understanding. Try to have a new idea. The website admire.phd presents a mental challenge of the month, grand challenge of the month. And of course, it may take longer than a month to solve it. That's okay. Maybe you'll never solve it. It doesn't matter. The answer is unimportant. It's the workout. It's the struggle. That's what's important. It provides a great opportunity to reach a new level of understanding, to have the aha moment, to sit there and struggle and struggle. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see it now, I get it. This makes sense to generate an idea that wasn't put there by anyone else. Struggle, struggle, struggle. When tackling a grand challenge, it's, it's great to have a good coach, right? 
A swim coach is not going to swim your laps for you, but he or she can say, you know, rotate your hips more. Don't take your head out of the water so much. Lock your elbows when you scream line, et cetera, et cetera. A good coach, check in frequently, evaluate strategies, give encouragement, and when you finally get it, then you can have an answer to the question, what's the hardest problem you've ever solved? You can say, well, let me tell you about this grand challenge I worked on. So the website offers coaching, if you're interested, via the internet and Zoom. And for more information, you can visit edmire.phd. So here's a good test. If there's a potential student that's interested in tackling a grand challenge, is this problem an exciting challenge or an unpleasant duty? Samantha is 16 and thus twice as old as Allison was when Samantha was as old as Allison is today. How old is Allison? Quite a challenge right there. Good luck.